Hiya, and welcome back to Psychic Connections, the game that teaches us that, just like Katz said, world cold and hard, Elliot titty soft and warm. Let's just hop right in. Maybe it's because of Elliot. If it is, I am going to I am going to cry happy tears. Who should I talk with? Yeah. Walking over to Elliot, I met with a very strong scent of overcooked meat. The large cat is hunched over, scrubbing his pan intensely with a cloth while occasionally sprink sprinkling water onto it. Everything okay? Well, it would be if I remembered most people don't like a well-done sausage. I got a little distracted and... well... I didn't say I was happy. I just said I was good. I didn't say I was happy. The feline flashes the inside of the pan towards me. Looks like there's a small burn in the pan now. Elliot resumes trying to buffer the scorch mark out of the pan, his tail whipping back and forth in agitation. Is there anything I can do to help? Not really, unless you happen to bring vinegar with you on this trip. <laughs> what good would vinegar do? You can make a small solution of water and vinegar and boil out the burn marks. Right, Elliot's baking all the time. He probably knows a ton of quick remedies for kitchen-related accidents. Did you need something? I didn't think anyone wanted more food. Oh, no, I just thought I'd see if he needed any help. Hmm, I could. Although, I'm not sure you'd be willing to do that out in the open like this. Yes, I am. I feel myself going slack-jawed. I mean, sure, he's an attractive guy, and with all the flirting, it's not like I've ever never thought about it but he's absolutely crazy if he thinks i'll consider doing that out here i am pulled out of my thoughts by a sharp pain in my cheek as elliot pinches it tightly in his paw relax i'm just kidding mostly elliot lets out a hearty laugh as i feel my face getting red how can he say stuff like that as if it's no big deal you know you talk big but i'm starting to think you're all bark and no bite is that a challenge yes no, not really, just an observation. Don't you ever worry about offending someone with crude jokes like that? I, uh, well, I suppose it's just... Elliot shifts uncomfortably, unwilling to meet my gaze. His hands clasp together while his fingers fumble around one another. He looks beyond distressed. I wasn't looking to upset him, I just thought that maybe we could have a conversation. Look, I'm not that mad, I just think you sometimes give off the wrong impression. Unless I'm supposed to believe you're a stud that only thinks about sex. Right, sorry, I guess it's just rare that I get to meet someone new and not have to worry about how much of myself I can share. You should have seen how compliments I used how many compliments I used to shower Jude with. I guess I haven't really been thinking about that. Zoe said there were more psychics out there, but it's not something you can just ask someone about. There probably isn't a psychicsonly.com or anything like that. How exactly would they find someone? Wait, so that ex of yours, did he know you were psychic? What? No, where did that come from? I don't know, I guess I just wondered if anyone else knew about all of this. As far as I'm aware, nobody has told anyone anything. I'd consider telling Liam, but I... Elliot's eyebrows furrow and his words trail off. He stares blankly at the fire for a moment before turning towards me once more. I decided against it. Why's that? We'd already been drifting apart and then I'd found out he... Let's talk about something else. This trip is supposed to be fun and I don't want to bring down the mood. Sure thing. We quickly steer away from the topic of Elliot's ex and talk about more lighthearted things. Eventually, a smile returns and we're both laughing about something that happened at the cafe. I feel bad about prying into Elliot's personal life, but I feel like I learned this conversation was still important. Time passes by like this. Zoe eventually rejoins the group and we all gradually intermingle. Before long, we are all gathered around the fire watching the embers fly away and from the crackling wood. Elliot reaches into his cool into one of his coolers and pulls out two glass bottles. It looks like some kind of beer. I brought lagers. Does anyone want one? I'll take one. Do you have anything lighter? Elliot gives Aiden a look that makes the hair on the back of my neck stand up. Aiden simply gulps and nods, taking a lager from Elliot. Mason, would you like one? I think that's how you pronounce it. Yeah, let's get fucked up. I nod my head meekly. 
I haven't had much in the way of alcohol since my accident, and I'm still acquiring a taste for it. I'll take one, too. Very funny. Last I checked, you're still not 21. Seriously? You guys are gonna be like that even now? It's not like it's anything special. I'm not drinking either. Oh, easier said when you're over that age barrier. I bet none of you even remember what it was like we didn't have alcohol. I do, especially since it's not like it was actually that long ago for me. Might have gotten impatient too and tried it if life didn't fast forward on me. He hands me the cold bottle and I look at the label. It's a crude design of a buff donkey farmer with half-lidded eyes. Mule brew. Hopefully, that at least tastes good. I press the bottle to my lips, opting to ignore the sour smell as I know it isn't the best indicator for taste. I should have trusted my nose more. The flavor is rancid as how I imagined beer brewed in toilets on prison TV shows would taste. Let's get fucked up and do some fucked up shit. Elliot looks at me expectantly, and I try to put on a big smile, but I can't stop myself from gagging. You don't like it? How the hell is anyone supposed to like this? It tastes absolutely horrendous. I don't know. It's certainly not of a high quality, but I'd consider it tolerable. Zoe and I look at Aiden bewildered, but I but I find focusing on him difficult as the heretic, as the horrible acidic taste in my mouth keeps grabbing my attention. Seriously, it's just... Where did you even get this? My friend Clive brews his own beers. That's him on the label, actually. Well, tell Clive he needs to consider a different career. It's always been too harsh. It really isn't that terrible. I think it needs to be marketed to a crowd looking for a specific flavor. Do you drink a lot, Aiden? I've been known to enjoy a good brew, and while I won't lie and say I've enjoyed this, Clive's lager, I can assure you I've had worse. God, I'm not even going to dare give it another try. That's it. Quinn jumps off of his seat. Everyone looks at him in a surprise as he begins hopping up and down in excitement. We should play truth or dare. Seriously? Yes, seriously. Come on, it'll be fun. Quinn looks at all of us with big pouty eyes. I look to the others and see mixed emotions Longer. on everyone's faces. Is it Lager? Have I been mispronouncing it? You know what? You know what? You know, I'm, I'm going to Google it. I'm going to Google it. Have I been mispronouncing it the entire fucking time? Okay, okay, pronunciation. Okay. Yeah, I've been, I've been pronouncing it right. I've been pronouncing it right. Thank you, Google. Zoe especially seems to be deep in thought. Okay, let's do it. We're really doing this. Zoe nods and Aiden lets out a sigh of resignation. A grin begins splaying across Elliot's face while Jude just grumbles. The ground rules are quickly set. We'll take turns in order asking truth or dare. If we don't tell the truth or do the dare, we have to do a punishment. What do we do for a punishment? It can't be alcohol related because otherwise, Quinn can't participate. Why don't we just do strip poker style? If you don't do a dare or tell the truth, you lose a piece of clothing. Leave it to Elliot to come up with a way to pervert this game. These are not... <laughs> That's a great idea! Wait, what? Hmm, I'm not super keen, but it's a good punishment. How is this happening? I suppose it's not the most unreasonable request, and it encourages you to follow along. I'm just going to go ahead and pull up the sensor. I'm just going to pull up the sensor, because I, I, don't, I don't fucking like this. And it encourages you to follow along. No, no, no! There's no way we're actually doing this! Jude is surely going to disagree. Oh, I guess that's fine. I just have to not lose. What? Even Jude? Sad. How did I find myself actually playing a strip truth or dare? You okay, Mason? You seem perturbed. What? what? No, I just, uh, I just didn't think I'd be stripping for any of you all. Hey, we're all friends. Nobody's going to take any pictures of the weird freckles on your ball sack or whatever. <laughs> The heck? I don't have a weird nut freckle. Cool. Then you've got nothing to worry about. Two of you are completely sober, and the other three have only had a single drink. Where did all of the logic go? How about you start us off, Mason? Me? Huh. Okay. Okay, which one? Aiden, Elliot, Jude, Quinn, or Zoe?
Yeah. It's gotta be Elliot. Hmm. Dare. A dare for Elliot. I should probably make this a good one. I dare you. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. I dare you to send a picture of your junk to a complete stranger. There's no way he'll do it. That seems rather risque. Does that mean you give up? Elliot flashes me a sly smile and pulls out his phone, undoing his belt buckle. He slips his phone under his pants and a distinct click is heard. We all shout a few random numbers and within moments his dare is completed. You'll have to try harder than that to get to me. What? 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 Oh my god. Hopefully it's my phone number. You didn't even flinch at the idea, though. Sure, it's a stranger. What's the risk? But, like, I'd still have thought about it for at least a minute. I certainly won't be sending anyone pictures of my vag if I can help it. I guess I'm just a little more adventurous than some of you, then. Adventurous? Somehow that doesn't feel like the right word. Carefree or impulsive might be closer. Regardless, none of us can dispute Elliot completed the dare I gave him, and it becomes Jude's turn. Jude scans all of us. His eyes linger on me for a moment, and I feel a lump forming in my throat. Thankfully, his gaze settles on Quinn, and I'm flooded with relief instead of dread. Quinn, truth or dare? <laughs> dare. Jude grins, and Quinn realizes he's made a mistake that he can't take back. I want you to prank call one of your teachers. What? That's so juvenile. Hey, it's my dare, so I decide. You sure you're up for that, Quinn? What? Yeah, totally. It should be a piece of cake. I mean, I just call, make a joke, and then hang up real quick. Quinn pulls out his phone and quickly starts tapping on his phone. He puts it on speaker, allowing us to hear everything. The voice I hear is familiar to me, and it becomes readily apparent which instructor he called. Hello? Hi, yes, is this John Breyer? Yes, that's me. Tell me, is your refrigerator running? <laughs> really? This old joke? He'll be lucky to finish it before Mr. Breyer hangs up on him. Before this goes any further, you're aware I have cholera. <laughs> you're aware I have caller ID, right, Quinn? Additionally, I have your number because you submitted your contact information as part of the online course registration system. Quinn stands there, mouth agape, nearly paralyzed with fear. Uh, um, sorry, wrong number. He quickly hangs up on Mr. Bryer and he breathes a sigh of relief. But I can tell he's much tenser than he was before. I didn't even know the teachers had our numbers, although I guess it makes sense if they need to contact us in an emergency. Well, that could have gone worse. It could have gone better, too. I say we try to keep Quinn from getting expelled for the rest of this. Agreed. Quinn grimaces, nodding meekly in agreement. His dare might not have gone well, but now it's Quinn's turn. He begins scanning each of us, trying to decide who the best person to pick is. After that last dare, I bet he picks Joe. Mason. Truth or dare. Hmm? But what about... Quinn looks at me expectantly, and I remember that this game is going to last a couple of rounds. I shouldn't expect him to just immediately pick Jude like that. He'll need a little bit to come up with something anyway. Okay, are we doing truth or dare? Sal would be very disappointed in him. Sal would send him to Jesus. I'll s I'd probably send him to Jesus. What da Mason doing? Is it truth or dare? Yeah, let's do truth. Hmm, where did you get the scar on the back of your head? Oh, I've been rather curious, too. I wasn't expecting him to ask about this. It's pretty faded, and it's not like others have been looking at the back of my head often. Everyone's attention is now on me, no doubt waiting for me to regale some epic story about how I got the scar. I guess now is as good a time as any. So a while back, I was, a bit of a, I was in a bit of a car accident, and it left me pretty banged up. I was recovering well after a couple of weeks, but I didn't wake up. The scar back here is from when they removed something they found lodged in my brain that they, that they thought kept me from waking up. Apparently, there was a lot of debate on if they should remove it, given it was located close to my spinal cord. Anyway, the scar is from that surgery, and as you can see, it didn't leave me a vegetable. I finish my story, and everyone looks at me wide-eyed, like I dropped some kind of huge bombshell. They're looking at me differently. Do they think I'm weird now? Are they seriously judging me? Who are they to- Holy crap, that's amazing! What? And so you had a wicked car accident and survived impossible surgery? I mean... I guess... Quinn! It's hardly amazing. Mason just told us his tragic story about how he lost a few weeks of his life. I have to imagine recovery wasn't easy. I noticed what he said, and I almost considered letting it slide, but I know better. I need to be honest. Actually, it was more than a few weeks. They were wrong. Removing the object didn't wake me up. 
Everyone goes quiet, rapidly listening to my words. I feel my palms shaking as I try to motivate myself to finish. How long? Almost two years. You were in a coma for two years? That's like forever. It's remarkable you're even standing. Most people suffer from varying degrees of brain damage from long-term comas. I guess you got a tough nut in that dome of yours. Everyone begins laughing and smiling, and... In a moment, I realize how foolish I'd been acting. Why do they think they'd judge me? Sure, it's strange, but people who care about you shouldn't treat you differently for something you couldn't control. Is that it? Do they care about me? This epiphany hits me hard. I almost don't even notice the tears falling from my eyes. I quickly put a stop to the waterworks, wiping the stray drops from my face. Thankfully, I don't think anyone catches it. Alright, that's enough sap. I'm ready for more fun. Looking at Elliot, I see his patience waiting for his turn is run thin. Aiden, truth or dare? Truth. Why do you want to go into business? What? You know why. Maybe, but it's been a long while since I've asked. I want to go into business because it's what I've spent my whole life being groomed for. Additionally, I'm quite good at it, and thanks to my personal assets. He says this last line while pointing at his head. I can't imagine I'll be outdone by any of my competitors. You have a backup plan, though? Like, just in case something... I don't need a backup plan. There's nothing that could possibly stop me. Jude rolls his eyes at this, and I can't blame him. Even if he's right, what Aiden's saying is a bit arrogant. Yeah, yeah, for the inevitable NSFW. Life can be full of surprises, and we can't just assume everything will go our way. I wonder if Aiden even realizes this. Now it's my turn. Elliot, truth or dare? Truth. When was the last time you'd had contact with Liam? Isn't asking about a previous relationship a bit personal? He was clearly trying to get something out of me, so why shouldn't I be allowed to do the same? Even so, this seems... I met with him a couple days ago. Elliot's ears flatten and his tail droops slow. He almost looks ashamed somehow. Did he try convincing you to get back together with him? The topic came up. But you said no, right? After all, he cheated on you. So naturally, you said no, right? I didn't give him an answer. Elliot, please tell me you aren't even considering it. No, I'm not. It, I just, it's hard. There's so much history there and I thought I'd be over it by now. Besides, maybe he's ch- People like that don't change. He's trash and you should be kicking him to the curb. Not getting all wishy-washy. You can do way better than that guy, Elliot. You just gotta put yourself out there. Ha <laughs> ha. Like I haven't been already. Elliot eyes, Elliot's eyes meet mine for a moment before looking at the others with a meek expression. I won't get back with him. Good. Every time I see him strolling around, I feel like I may lose my lunch. Alright, let's shift this to a feel-good subject. Jude, truth or dare? Dare. I dare you to give Aiden a compliment. What? You heard me. I want you to say something genuinely nice to him. I look at Zoe incredulously, and she winks in my direction. Is this how she plans to solve the issues with Aiden and Jude? Whatever, I, uh, I don't know. You can't, th you can't think of one good thing to say about Aiden? No, just give me a minute. Aiden looks at Jude with amused curiosity. He doesn't seem to be surprised with how much the caribou was struggling to come up with anything. I guess I'm impressed with how you managed to balance your schedule. I'm always struggling to balance two jobs, helping my mom, and this. No idea how you do it. Ah. Based on the expression on Aiden's face, I'd almost think he's actually a little touched. Well, it helps that Aiden's a glutton for punishment. I'm pretty sure he only sleeps six hours a day. Oh, like you're one to talk. At least I spend my time being productive, whereas you're all over the place. Okay, okay. I will still be paying attention to it. The two bicker between themselves like an old married couple, and I do my best not to laugh at their antics. It's my turn anyway, so I'll need to pick someone again. Ah. Okay, who's truth or dare? I don't want to do Elliot again, but I feel like we have to. Yeah, let's do Zoe. Dare. This is a great opportunity to finally have my revenge. I'm glad that we're closer now, but I want to get her back for some of the stunts she's pulled on me. Look around me for inspiration, and that's when I spot Jericho smoking a cigarette off to the side. I dare you to try and pants Aiden's bodyguard. What? <laughs> that's crazy. There's no way you can do that. I don't know. If she was quick, maybe. Jericho would know what she was up to by the time she even got close to him. 
Zoe looks at everyone and clearly weighs the options in her mind. But it seems her decision is made once she removes her hoodie. As much as I'd like to believe I can totally tackle Jerry and rip his pants down, I'm going to be realistic. Now it would've been fun to see you try, though. I'd appreciate it if we left Jericho out of all future dares. That's a reasonable request, and I admit that it probably wasn't fair of me to dare Zoe to do something I presumed she couldn't do. It's Jude's turn after me, and I find myself in suspense of what he might do. Next round of dares start, and something interesting happens after Jude dares Quinn to put his legs behind his head. Not the contort- not the contortionist drink act that Quinn does. That was an unsettling display of anatomy. Quinn asks Aiden to say it's something to he likes about water. Jude. Aiden was flustered but gave it's an answer. To drink water. He admitted to admiring Jude's conviction. When it was Elliot's turn again, he got Jude to admit to being frustrated with Aiden's way of doing things without asking first. By the time it becomes Zoe's turn again, Aiden had enough. That's it, no more. I get what you all are trying to do, but it's ridiculous. I thought we were engaging in a game, but you all have turned it into a counseling session. If you don't like it, then stop picking truth and choose dare. Fine, dare. And don't even think about twisting it into a truth. Ella leans over and whispers into Zoe's ear. Her face lights up and she begins giggling. All right. I dare you to do whatever the next dare is. What? You couldn't come up with one? Fine. Great, in that case, I think we should also reverse the turn order to change things up. Wait, how's that fair? Well, then, we'll put it to a vote. All in favor? Zoe raises her hand in the air, as does Ellie, who's currently crouched next to Quinn, whispering. Quinn's eyes light up and his hand shoots upward as well. <laughs> Jude and Aiden don't raise their hands, and Zoe looks at me expectantly. Even if I don't raise my hand, the best I could do is tie the vote. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we got don't raise, raise the hand. Another don't raise. <laughs> <laughs> don't raise your hand for what don't raise our hand for whatever elliot's planning so which one is against aiden the raising our hand is against aiden raising our hand is against aiden <laughs> reluctantly reluctantly I raise my hand and I feel Jude and Aiden staring daggers into me. I was next and Jude was right after me. There was no doubt that Jude had a good dare for Aiden. No! We're not going to raise our hand. Wait, yep. Yeah. Nah. Yeah. Thank you, Mason. Yeah. Thanks, Mason. Aiden says this in a mock tone. And I can tell he's irritated. I'm still not privy to everything going on, but it seems like Zoe and Elliot have hatched up some kind of plan. Alright, that's a majority then. That means it's your turn, Elliot. Elliot's mouth splits into the widest grin I've ever seen. It's almost intimidating. Alright, Jude. Truth or dare? Jude thinks for a moment. He looks at Elliot and Zoe trying to read the situation. Dare. It better be a good one. Oh, it is. <laughs> oh, I dare you and Aiden to go skinny dipping in the lake down the hill. <laughs> what everything goes quiet jude stands there with his mouth agape and aiden looks equally flabbergasted i expected elliot would suggest something absurd but that's even crazier than i expected there's there's no way either of them are going to do that just as i'm thinking this jude removes his shirt at first i assume he's going to pass on the dare but then he starts undoing his pants you idiot what the hell are you doing what's it look like i'm getting ready to get in the water that's absurd. The punishment is to remove a single article of clothing. Why would you agree to do this? <laughs> it's fine if your skin isn't thick enough to do this. Fine, I will. Maybe you're just embarrassed that we'll all see your... <laughs> it is not. Aiden begins fuming, but before I know it, he starts ripping off his ridiculous scout uniform. Elliot and Zoe take in the sight with twisted pleasure while Quinn bounces with glee. This is stupid. Why are they both trying to act so macho? The two remove article after article of clothing while making their way towards the lake. Oh. Hang on. I'm gonna do a couple screenshots. Just for you. 
This is for you all. I'll post it in the Discord. I was curious about Aiden's necklace. I saw the lake from afar at the camp. It looked more like a pond from higher up, but getting close like this, I'm able to see how beautiful it really is. The moon is reflecting off of the cool waters, and the sight is further enhanced by the two gentlemen reduced to just their underwear. Aiden's underwear is very practical and possibly new. Meanwhile, Jude's looks worn down, and I can't not notice the impressive... Eh. Alright, you two. Lose the undies or it doesn't count. You're all enjoying this way too much. It doesn't mean you're giving up. No! Jude quickly pulls down his boxer briefs and exposes himself to all of us. My eyes become transfixed. The two quickly turn tail and run towards the water as fast as they can. Even their butts look not- uh, God damn it. God, it's cold. Are we far enough in yet? Oh, lighten up. It's not that bad. Easy for you to say. I don't have nearly as much blood flow uh, as you do. Huh. I- <laughs> Jude starts laughing loudly. That might be the first time I've seen him laugh like that, and Aiden joins him before long. <laughs> this is so stupid. <laughs> We're in a lake in the dead of night, naked. The two continue laughing aloud, and I also can't help but think about their humor of this entire thing. Not even a week ago, they were both at each other's throats, and now they both look like naked idiots. I I'm sorry! I'm sorry! Okay, then. I'm pulled out of this thought bubble by the rustling behind me. I turn to look at what it is, and am immediately met with a white flash and a dark shadow sprinting to the water. Quinn in all his glory runs along the dock and dives into the water while Elliot launches himself like a cannonball. Evidently, an informal and silent decision was made to go skinny dipping as a group. Before long, they're all tugging at one another, splashing about loudly. You gonna go join them? Uh, I don't think that's really for me. Why? Where'd you gonna pop? Yeah. What? No, I just... Then is it that bad boy down there for me? Following the line to Zoe's fingers, I look downward and... Shit, sorry. Hey, cool it. It's not a big deal. They're all cute guys. I get it. I don't blame you for liking one of them that way. They're all good people. So, which one is it? Which is what? Which one of the guys is getting you all flustered? You can tell me. I'm good about keeping secrets. Who says I like any of them? We've already established that you like at least one of them physically. I just want to know if you like any of them romantically. I swear this woman might be one of the most nosiest people I've ever met. Can I just not say... You could, but then you spend the rest of the weekend with me pestering you to tell me. I can definitely picture that, and it seems like the worst way to spend the rest of this trip. There's no harm in telling her. I know that. Yet somehow this feels like an important question. As if answering this question could have some serious implications. But I've already decided to be honest with her and myself. I have to wonder, which one do I like the most? It's no question. It's no question. Okay. It's Elliot. I mean, his name is in the title. Why am I not surprised? I suppose it's not the worst thing. Who knows? Maybe you can help him with what I couldn't. What do you mean? Hey! Zoe picks me up and begins dragging me towards the dock. How is she this strong that she can carry me like this? Am I just that light? I know I've lost a lot of weight, but this can't be normal. In moments, I go tumbling into the murky waters. Water quickly filling my nose as I flail my way back to the surface. Upon reaching the surface, Zoe cackles like a supervillain from the docks and jumps in after me. I swim away from her and join the others who are all standing on the submerged coast. Don't let him get away! Quickly, Elliot and Jude grab me, and I find myself surrounded by four naked studs with the naked pandas pursuing me. Oh, no, you don't. We're all in the water, so you're staying. Uh, what about Jericho? What about Jericho? Yeah, that's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. He's over at camp. Rising from beneath the water's surface, a nude bull appears between all of us. Actually, I got in a while ago. I can watch it easier from here. I don't need you this close. I'm not in danger. Maybe not, though it's best to play it safe. I can't afford to lose my stable income. What the hell? Why are you all so weird? Zoe is a sigh in this VM. She is. Ah, uh, don't be like that. You love us and you know it. 
I desperately try to escape, but alas, I am forced to surrender to their nonsensical fun in the water. After a series of gags and hijinks in the lake, Jericho intercepts our fun and declares Aiden has been in the water too long and runs the risk of getting sick. Now I'm cold and wet and my clothes are soaked. I duck behind some trees to change out of my wet clothes and into the only other garments I packed. A single pair of spare underwear. Walking off from the trees, I bump into Quinn who is strapped in a large towel. Mason, you're so wet. Well, yeah, I decided not to bring a towel or anything. I didn't think I'd be doing anything to get my clothes ruined. Here, I've got a spare you can use, although it's a little small. Quinn hands me a small bath towel, and I do my best to wrap myself or wrap it around myself to no avail. Eh, what the hell, everyone else is running around naked or half-naked anyway, right? That's the spirit. Hey, so maybe this is a bad time, but when we're in the dorms, I've been wearing more clothes than I used to, and it's made sleeping a little difficult. Okay, what do you mean? Well, I normally sleep naked. I was just wondering if that would bother you. Wait, so he's asking me if I'm fine with him basically sleeping in the buff in our dorm room? I mean, I don't think it's the worst thing, but I don't know. I feel like it could be... it could lead to some awkward situations. Yeah, which one? Uh, I don't mind, or underwear minimum. What is with this conversation? I don't want you to be uncomfortable, but I don't know. Won't it be weird? Oh, totally, but it'll only be when I'm trying to sleep, and, it, and I'd still be covered up with blankets. I guess if it's more relaxing for you, I don't have a problem with it. I wonder if this was the right thing. I'm pretty sure my chance of seeing Quinn in the nude has increased exponentially. Hey guys, get over here. Zoe calls everyone to the campfire where Jude and Elliot are already seated, drying off with towels and wearing only their underwear. So, we've got three tents and six of us. Jericho's already decided he wants to sleep in the vehicle he drove in, here in. So, we're going to pair off. Jude and Quinn, you'll share a tent while Aiden and I share the other tent. Mason, you'll be bunking with Elliot. Does that sound good to everyone? Zoe looks at me and gives me a wink. She totally split this up so that I'd be sharing a tent with Elliot. She's so manipulative, but why does she think... What does she think is going to happen? We're surrounded by her friends. It's not like we do anything. Plus, Elliot hasn't exactly done anything beyond flirty, so there's no guarantee he's even serious. What if he is, though? Would he, while I'm sleeping, or maybe even... My mind becomes plagued with lewd thoughts and ideas of things that could transpire tonight. Hey, Mason, it looks like we'll be rooming together this weekend. Yeah, it certainly looks like it. I hope you don't mind sharing a tent with me. Not at all, I'm sure it'll be fine. Well, just to be sure, I... Don't take up too much space. I tend to move in my sleep, so if I roll over towards your sleeping bag, just give me a kick. Heh, <laughs> no worries, Ellie. Sleeping bag? Did I? I don't think I packed one of those. Why wouldn't I pack a sleeping bag? It's clearly an essential. What was I planning? To sleep on the ground and make a pillow out of rocks? Is everything okay? Nope. Shit, I'm stupid. Alright, uh, Maestro said we're good. Nope, shit, I'm stupid. What's wrong? I forgot to pack a sleeping bag, which wouldn't be such a bad thing if my only pair of clothes weren't hanging to dry right now. Oh. Elliot looks at me sadly for a moment before his ears perk up. Why don't you just share my sleeping bag, then? Share? Yeah, it might be a tight squeeze, but you'll stay warm for sure. It's not the worst idea. At least until I consider our current state of undress. The thought of squeezing into a sleeping bag with Elliot with almost nothing on is almost too much to think about, and I force my mind elsewhere before I have a different issue. Wouldn't our lack of clothes be an issue? I mean... You were planning on sleeping- were you planning on sleeping in your underwear? I wouldn't normally, but I tend to overheat, and I imagine that getting snug in a sleeping bag will only make me perspire more. It doesn't bother me if it doesn't bother you. More than anything, I'm just worried that you'll catch a cold. Don't worry, I won't try anything if that's what you're worried about. You have my word. Having his word does make me feel a little better, but I'm more worried about my own subconscious mind springing to action, as it were. Then again, it's not like any other options are being presented for me. I nod my head and we both settle into a sleeping bag. He gets in first, laying on his side. Then I do my best to slide in front with my back turned to him. He definitely wasn't wrong. It's a snug fit and we're both also still slightly damp, which creates a very humid environment in the tight space. You okay? Yeah, I just need to adjust. We grind against one another as we adjust our positions. Eventually, we settle into a side spooning that feels like it could work. Is that comfortable for you? Yeah. I'm saying that, but I really can't bring myself to mention his is pressed against my uh. There's no way he, can, he can't feel that, but just the thought of bringing it up ties knots in my stomach. With his large gut pressed into my back, I feel an intense yet comfortable heat emitting from his body. He's like a heater. If I don't think about that, this is actually pretty nice. I just need to not think about his big, warm... Oh, God damn it.
darkness, nothing, like a void, a moment etched between nothing and eternity. I've been here before, and I know this feeling. I'm not alone. Oh, now this is an interesting development. You're awake this time, aren't you? How peculiar. What? Who are you? Uh, of course, where are my manners? It's a pleasure to meet you, Dante. It's a pleasure to meet you, Mason. You may call me Dante. I recognize this as a dream, yet it feels strangely lucid. Like I could reach out and touch something, if not for the blatant void before me. Waves of confusion continue crashing into my mind. However, stronger than that is my desire for answers. Who are you? I believe I already answered that question. A better question would be, who are you? You've left me quite puzzled. Zoe seems to have taken quite the interest in you, but what I can't understand is why. What makes her trust you? I don't... I don't know. Where does she get off asking for help? She doesn't deserve your help. Is it getting angry? What do you want from me? I hear nothing at first, and I begin to think that the voice may have left for a moment, but an interruption to my thoughts proves me wrong. I want you to put a stop to the hypocrisy. What hypocrisy? You have yet to truly see it, but you will in time. I know you will. Nothing this void is saying makes any sense. Is he talking about Zoe? It seems you've taken an interest in you've taken quite an interest in Elliot. He uses pretty words to hide his pain, but he's just damaged goods like the rest of them. I look forward to watching him play pretend with you. What do you mean? Just wait and see. I'm sure you'll figure it out. Unfortunately, it seems the opportunity to probe your mind have come and gone. Pro my mind? What have you been- Ooh, so sorry. Ooh, so sorry. I'll, I'll also have more pressing things to do than play 20 questions. Toodles! As if a switch were flipped, the darkness surrounding me dissipates and I find myself beginning to fall. In an instant, I find myself turning and experience the strangest sensation of looking upon myself as I fall. I continue on this course, expanding a hard collision into where I'm laying. Instead, I watch as I seem to slip inside my sleeping cell. Oh! Okay. Toodle, schnoodle, see you in the... What's that? Opening my eyes, I am greeted with the sight of the tense interior and a light throbbing in my head. Rolling, my eyes drift to the canopy of the tent while I try to collect my thoughts. Was that really just a dream? I want to believe it was just another nightmare, but after everything I've experienced this past week... Th that seems too good to be true. Morning, cutie. Sleep well? The big panther's smooth voice catches me off guard, and I turn my head to find him looking down at me. Elliot's body had provided such a cushion that I'd forgotten I was sharing the sleeping bag with a person rather than a bunch of pillows. You alright? You look like you've seen a ghost or something. What? No, I, uh, I just had a weird dream. A weird dream, huh? I've had plenty of those. Don't worry, it's perfectly normal, and if you'd like, I can close my eyes while you adjust your underwear. What? No, that's not what I'm talking about! Oh, sorry, I just assumed with how your butt keeps wiggling against me that you might have been suggesting something. Sure enough, he's right. My tail keeps lightly brushing up against something. Eh. My face begins heating up as my head fills with a ceaseless stream of naughty thoughts about the large feline sharing a sleeping space with me. Hello? Earth to Mason? You still with me, cutie? Yep, yeah, sorry. Do you want to talk about this dream of yours? Maybe that'll make you feel better. Okay, are we going to tell him or no? How scandalous. It was just a really weird dream, at least I think it was a dream. Elliot listens to me with rapt attention as I regale the story of the strange happenings in the night. At no point does he interrupt me, he simply nods along as I explain everything to him as best as I can. Once I finish, he flashes me a warm smile while tenderly patting me on the head. I wouldn't worry about all of that too much. It sounds like... it sounds a lot like an anxiety dream. No, but I really don't think it was a dream, it all felt so real. Hey, I get those two every now and again. They can stick with you for a bit, but I'm sure you'll feel better if you wake up more. Perhaps he's right. Maybe it really was some kind of anxiety dream, and my mind is just trying to catch up with all the craziness this past week. Say something less relatable, cats. I look back at the tender man whose warm expression continues drawing me in. It's easy for me to just forget about a lot of life's complications whenever he's around. Wait, is he getting closer? Elliot's face does indeed begin inching closer and closer to mine. Is he about to kiss me? A tense knot begins welling in my chest as his face continues to approach me. Can't exactly wiggle free from the sleeping bag. His eyes look so deep, as if begging me to dive into them. Lips slightly pucker and, huh? 
Elliot blows a stream of air right next to my ear and quickly picks out my fur with his claws. What the heck are you doing? Hang on, you've got something... There. Elliot's hand pulls back from the top of my head, revealing a blade of grass. Evidently, he was not, in fact, making a move on me. Instead, he was removing some debris from my hair. That's embarrassing. Hey, how about you wait here for a second, and let me get out first to see if your clothes are dry. Ellie proceeds to wiggle his way out of the sleeping bag, sliding against me the entire way. There is no way that he's not doing this on purpose. Same, at the same time, the thought occurred to me. I'm given a direct eye-level view of his pl- Uh... Ah! I think we all know what the correct answer is. Please don't murder me. I very much like being alive. When it's practically... Uh, how can I not? I'm unable to keep myself from quickly scanning over the surface of the area as if trying to carve an image into my memory. What the fuck? I know I saw him. Nah. It was only a quick glance before he jumped into Blake. Would he let me if I asked? He's always flirting, but would he be willing to do something that serious? My mouth begins watering and I glance upward at Elliot who looks down at me with a grin. Sorry about that. Let me go snag my pants and I'll check out on your clothes. Elliot separates himself from the rest of the way from the sleeping bag and proceeds towards his pants that he'd removed the night before. Nah, I call bullshit right there. I could if he wanted to kiss us, but instead he went with a bullshit excuse saying we had grass on our face. <laughs> my disappointment is immeasurable and my day is ruined. Elliot quickly scampers out of the tent, his tail swaying behind him, and I find myself with a moment alone. I'm not sure what had come over me just now. At the very least, I thought I had a better lid on my emotions. Elliot emerges from the wilderness outside, but I quickly notice he did not return with my clothes. You're not going to be happy. They're still not dry? No, they're still a little damp. They probably need to hang there for another hour or so. So I have to walk around in nothing but my underwear for another hour. Tempting, but you could always stay in here while you wait for them to dry some more. I'll have to, but I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to do cooped up in here. Well, we could always just sit in here and talk. Get to know one another better. I suppose that's reasonable. If my brain is going to start thirsting after a guy I met not even a week ago, the least I can do is get to know him first. Okay, what do you want to know? Hmm. Elliot looks at me while pondering for a moment. His tail whips about as he seems to weigh some ideas in his mind. You have any allergies? Huh? Well, I bake goods and I'd really hate to poison you. Jude's allergic to peanuts and Zoe can't eat strawberries. What about you, though? Anything I should be looking out for? Oh, no, nothing like that. I mean, certain laundry detergents... Certain laundry detergents make me feel itchy. But I don't have any food allergies. Alright, that's good to know. Your turn. Well, I haven't had much time to think. Oh, what about you? Any allergies? Yeah, fair enough. No, I don't have any. Well, okay, it's not necessarily an allergy, but I can't stand watermelon. What do you mean you can't stand it? Just the general taste. If anything has watermelon in it, my tongue immediately identifies the flavor and just rejects it. Nope, 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 nope. Nope, I'm immediately calling. Nope, nope, nope. 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 Watermelon is a summertime delicacy. You're lucky you're hot. Elliot, you're lucky you're hot. Elliot exaggerates some mocking movement to imply gagging. It's a little strange, but I guess there are stranger foods to hate. Water I know you did not just say that about watermelon amethyst. I kn I know you did not just say that. All right, my turn again. Do you have any siblings? Nope, I'm an only child. Your turn. <laughs> well, I've got three older half brothers and one older stepsister and one older sister. So I guess if I add it all up, I've got two and a half siblings. Not sure that's how the math really works, but still, that's a lot of siblings. Yeah, it was a rambunctious house for a short while there. My mother's marriages had a tendency to burn bright and fast. Jeez, I can't imagine. I wonder. Pardon? Oh, no, I was just thinking. My parents separated after my accident. It just got me wondering if maybe one of them will turn out the same way. Elliot's tail stops flipping about and his face takes on a more serious expression. I think I might have just said something a little too heavy. Jeez, now he probably thinks I'm weird. Way to go, Mason! Can I ask about it? 
sure, but there's not much to tell, to be honest. I don't really remember my accident. It's like one minute I'm driving, and the next I blink, and I'm waking up in the hospital. Physical therapy made for a grueling few months. Apparently, lying still for a couple years is bad for your health. Who knew? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to upset you with bringing it up. We can talk about something else. It's fine, I mean, Aiden made you talk about your previous relationship last night, so this just makes things even. Right. Elliot shifts uncomfortably. And I can tell he's not exactly looking forward to poking that conversation. Seems like this Liam guy really twisted you up. You have no idea. Honestly, the worst part about it was that he never apologized. Even when I'd confronted him, he'd simply say we never declared we were exclusive, which was a total crap excuse. So you had declared yourselves exclusive. We were together for three years. I should have implied exclusivity. Well, I don't think Elliot is wrong. I do know that not having that conversation can lead to misunderstandings. However, if they had been together for three years without having that conversation, there was probably a lot of miscommunication. Well, it seems like it's still a little fresh, but I assume you'd been trying to get back out there. <laughs> not as hard as you might think. I talk a mean game, and I... And sure, I could probably find a quick hookup, but I'm not looking for someone to just have a good romp with. Call me old-fashioned, but I really do believe in the one. For a while, I really thought that was Liam, but now, well, who knows. I am practically 30. Maybe I've just missed that window of opportunity. <laughs> you're not that old. Besides, if there was an age limit on falling in love, that means my parents are doomed after splitting up. In an effort to cheer him up, I slowly place my palm atop the sulking cat's clenched hand. Elliot smiles at me warmly, clearly appreciating the gesture and the sentiment behind it. His tail perks back up from a droopy state, and I can see the tension releasing from his shoulders. Thanks, Mason. I think I needed to hear that. Here, give me a second. I'm gonna go check on your clothes again. Large Panther stands up from a seated position next to me and wanders his way out of the tent once more, grabbing the rest of his clothes on the way out. Perhaps I shouldn't have brought up his past like that. You'd think I'd know better. Takes a bit longer to return this time, but this time he returns with my clothing in hand. It's not perfect, but it's way better than it was before. Thank you, Elliot. I really do appreciate it. Slipping out of the sleeping bag, I begin dressing myself into my clothes. While they were now dry, they did have an uncomfortable stiffness to them that likely won't go away until they are properly washed. However, they'll have to do for today. Turning around, I catch Elliot quickly ducking his head out of the tent. Was he watching me put my clothes back on? Chuckling to myself, I finally get out of the little tent to greet the outdoors for the first time today. Elliot begins wandering down to his truck, but I notice Jude sitting idly by love while looking at the sky. Hey Jude, where's everybody at? I don't know where the mud is. Zoe went to look for him. Quinn's out at the lake swimming. You didn't feel like going you didn't feel like going with him? No, I don't like swimming, and I didn't bring any trunks, so hard pass on that. Oh. Alright, you two, breakfast is on. Elliot walks up to Jude, and I just in time to cut out a growing awkward silence between us. In his hands, he's holding several packages of what appear to be energy bars. Elliot hands one to Jude and then myself. I tentatively scan the wrapping of the gift I've just I've been given to learn about its contents. Bart's Breakfast Bowl Bar? The label depicts a lumberjack wolf with giant muscles flexing with an axe. A caption stating it has optimized morning nutrition in every bite. It's got all of your basic nutrients in a convenient bar. I figured it'd be good for a trip like this. I don't want to pack too much, and the rest of the food I packed were saving for a late lunch. I've got to be sure to save at least three of these bad boys for the others. Well, two of them are coming up the hill now, so you won't need to hold on to them for very long. Sure enough, in a matter of seconds, Quinn and Aiden begin walking up the hill. Do I need to censor? I don't think I do. Aiden had a sour expression on his mug, which was easily explained by the nude bunny walking beside him, and yep, I got a censor. Quinn grabbed a towel hanging off a tree branch, and Elliot approached with two of his energy bars. Aiden scowled at the offering, yet still grabbed it before storming off into his tent while Quinn gleefully took his. Looking around, I see Quinn drawing himself off while Jude continues his carving from last night. Elliot sits down on a log, humming to himself. Meanwhile, I can hear Aiden rummaging around in his tent. Walking over to Elliot, I listen in more to the tunies humming. It sounds vaguely familiar, but I can't quite place it. Hey, cantaloupe is good. Same with honeydew. Actually, have I had cantaloupe? I don't think I have. Wait, yeah, I did. D did I? Yeah, I did. It's been years, though. It's been, like, a year, though. It's been, like, a couple years. Honeydew is also pretty good. Honeydew is a type of melon. It's good. And that's about it. 
Hey there, big guy. What you humming? Oh, uh, hi, Mason. It's nothing special. Just an old ditty my mother used to sing to me. It's a little funny how things like that just pop into your head sometimes. Okay, bye. Ah! Like, sometimes I might be cleaning some tables at the cafe, and then, bam, I'll have a song from the radio stuck in my head. Yeah, earworms can be the worst. They're stuck in your head for ages, and even when they go away for a bit, they can come right back. Well, thankfully, I've got you to distract me with some interesting conversation to pull it out of my mind. Elliot looks at me rather suggestively, and I realize he genuinely expects me to come up with something to talk about. Ah, goddammit. I'm just gonna create a poll. It's time to drink water. Yeah, I'm gonna drink water after I create It's time poll. to drink water. It's time to drink water. It's time to drink water. Okay, so, uh... Edumacation. Uh, don't go... Baking my heart. Boom. Okay. Uh. All righty. Go ahead and vote. I'm going to hydrate. This music is really relaxing. <laughs> Why am I not surprised? So, it came up the other night that you've only been with four other people. Yes, while I might be a reputable flirt, I consider my romantic history to actually be quite tame. It takes a lot to keep myself from laughing at this. It's almost become a gag how often sexual conversation seems to arise around Elliot. Who am I asking? Elliot, what was your first time like? Oh, shit. My first time? Well, for one thing, I didn't really know what the hell I was doing. Neither did he really. Which was out in how uncomfortable the whole thing was. We just tried to... But it was when we were interrupted by his dad. Oh! Oh! Shut up. True story. Honestly, the whole thing was so embarrassing that it made the couple of times we tried afterward just too awkward for the both of us. Now you've got me curious. What was your first time like? Oh, I was just trying to come up with an interesting conversation. I wasn't really prepared for a counter question. Now, how should I go about avoiding giving an answer? You know, a gentleman really doesn't kiss and tell. Oh no, you are not pulling that card on me. I just told a really embarrassing story. Which you did so willingly, and I really appreciate that. Ella begins pouting as I start playfully poking fun at him. He definitely isn't happy that I've pulled a fast one off like this on him. I'm just teasing you. Lighten up. Seriously, I'm sorry. As I continue pleading with Elliot, his face gradually relaxes, and for a moment, I swear, I can almost see a grin spreading across his face. Oh, you jerk! You're messing with me, aren't you? <laughs> Guilty as charged. I'm sorry. I couldn't help it. You're just so fun to tease. Thought I might have genuinely hurt your feelings for a second there. Well, don't you worry. I'm not that sensitive. Unlike a certain deer I know. My eyes naturally drift, drift towards Jude, who I only just now notice is talking to Zoe, who seems to have reappeared from her walk in the woods. She walks away from him and enters Aiden's tent, and Jude continues whittling away at his block of wood. You know, Mason, speaking of sensitivity... Let him finish. It's prob... It's... I'm sure it's probably not an innuendo like my gutter-riddled brain is thinking. My hands are a bit worn from the other day. Do you mind helping me gather some firewood for when it's time to get dinner started? I'm sure, if you think that I can help. Elliot la leads me away into the woods and instructs me on what, he on what does and doesn't make for good firewood. As we make multiple treks to and from the trees, I notice Zoe talking with Quinn or Jude on our, on our last trip. The three of them all seem to disappear from the camp. Ugh. At this time, Aiden emerges from his tent and begins approaching us. Need any help? 
Oh, no worries. I think there's enough wood now for a good fire later tonight. I see. Do you know where Quinn ran off to? Quinn pulled Drew aside to go have a chat. I'm not sure what about, what about, but it seems serious. Zoe was talking with him, so I imagine it might have been about that incident with his roommate. I presume she went with them to mediate. I see. If I might, if I might ask, what do you make of all of it? Well, this Greg sounds like a real piece of work. At the end of the day, though, we need to trust Quinn will make the best decisions for himself. Right, but don't you think it's more than that? If we need to make sure this delinquent is punished properly for what he did. What do you think, Mason? Yes, I'm rather curious as well. I can understand both of their views on this, and I somewhat agree with each of them. Are we passive or aggressive? Hang on, while y'all decide, I'm going to check a text that I got. Okay. Since Elliot is passive, pick him. Yeah. Yeah. I think Elliot's right. Quinn is a grown man, and this type of situation is delicate. However, he, however he wants to handle it, it is ultimately going to be his decision. Even if we want to intervene and assist him more directly, we shouldn't do so unless Quinn asks us to. Some people don't know when to ask for help, though. It's easy to say that, but it's harder when you actually see how much that person is struggling. They both are making valid points, but this seems like it's about to get a little too heated. Okay, you two, let's break it up. What matters is that Zoe's dealing with Greg and that Quinn is going to be alright. We're going to stop there for the ad. Want to break from the ads? Do you know ads dance? Yeah! You get so happy seeing your old no ads dance. What matters is that Zoe's dealing with Greg and that Quinn is going to be alright. Right? The two men grumble their disapproval, but they seem to concede and agree with me. Elliot moves on with getting the food from his truck while Aiden alternates between watching Elliot and checking his phone. Jude, Quinn, and Zoe eventually return to us as the sun begins lowering in the sky. Their timing could not have been better as Elliot had just begun putting the fire together. Watching him bring the flame to life. Actually, we're going to leave off here tonight. I imagine we're going to start on another route tomorrow. Yes! Yes! I will. I will, Raj. I will. You have my promise. Well, stay safe, have a good night, and I'm going to and I'm going to see you all tomorrow. Fuck, I can't speak.